Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group, we supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 148. And we're delighted to be joined by Frank Rathall Jr. We're uh, dressed to impress here, and, uh, looking very smart. You've even got the special occasion watch out. Happy days. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but but also, not, uh, not as smart as you, though. Well, I've seen you all dressed up, so I thought I'd best put my shirt on. But, uh, what yeah. happened to Tom? <laughs> I've been asking myself for that for years, mate. Absolutely years. Yeah, I like got... repping the crow performance. I know, thing, it's, 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 a, it's, a nice, nice. it's a nice gilet, isn't it? I can't afford things like this, Chrissy. I thought Nick, yours. They are simple as that. Yeah. There you go. I'll tell you what, though. We've, we've just found out you're our biggest fan. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've listened to every 148. Oh, well done, well recovered. <laughs> there you are. But have, you, have you honestly never seen listen to one? No, or just not get the time. Um, yeah, so yeah, time, yeah, and choice. Time, I've, I've, <laughs> no, sometimes when you've been dealing with motorbikes all day, when you go home, you like probably switch? listening to people talk about motorbikes isn't what you want to do. So. Um, I've never no, no. I've never listened to <laughs> a good man. Good, but you know, I know how good they are. Good, well said. And you are doing a good job. Oh, thanks oh, very much. Of um, are you busy this time of the year down at Dynajet UK HQ? Yeah, so I'd say probably um, Dino work wise, this would probably be our busiest time of the year. Um, probably between March and the TT. That's where we, you know, pe people are getting prepared. You know, we do. We're not just racing. We do a lot of road bikes, um, Harley Davidsons. Um, we, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who would buy a Harley Davidson thing? Hmm. Let's get it fueled right. That, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Learn it can all make, the time. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Make. To be honest, mapping can absolutely transform a Harley Davidson. So uh, yeah, if you're a Harley owner and you're watching, <laughs> first thing you need to do is sort your mapping out. Um, but, you know, a lot of our industry is dictated by the weather. So people want to lock the bikes up over winter, put them in the garage, sort of this time of year, right? Let's, you know, one eye on uh, on the summer and the weather coming good. So people track days, people going to Spain, people testing um, upcoming race season. And then obviously people wanting to get the road bikes sorted. So, yeah, we're always busy. And I guess when people bring new bikes out, they, it's always a rush in it for, like, say, if a manufacturer brings a new bike, it's usually just before the season, so I bet this time of the year is, like, a bit of a mad rush to get. In fact, why, other than... I'm trying to think of, like, new models that have just come out, but there's not... Yeah, you see, the job changed maybe, you know, 10 years, 15 years ago. Uh, manufacturers would bring new sports bikes out in probably two-year cycles, so... It'd always be interesting. There'd always be something new, question marks, blah, 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 blah. The way the job is now, um, you know, we sort of go from season to season with not too much change. So, you know, if you look at the Superbike class, um, is there a new bike? I don't so, think there is. Yeah, I don't think this year, I think. Very good point. When's the last time there was a new Superbike on the grid? Well, the, 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 the Fireblade was a new bike. Fireblade. Did you, when, when did the Ducati change hands? A couple of years ago. Wasn't it? Was that two years yeah, ago? So this they, went, they went from the V twin to the V four. Um, I think Suzuki's the longest. Like that model of bike came out yeah, a yeah, long time ago. Yeah. Um, well, it's not changed since since, since you rode it. Yeah, two thousand eighteen, mm. and yeah, yeah, it's been ages. Um, but yeah, in terms of people, might not like if you're not into BSB or like into the race and might not have heard of Dynajet UK so do I just give a quick rundown of like what the what the business is and like your involvement with BSB and that sort of thing okay well might as well sort of yeah start from the the very beginning um so back in the 70s um my dad Frank senior um my little lad's called Frank as well and my granddad was Frank so there's four of us in a row now <laughs> <laughs> Makes life a little bit confusing. For but, me, uh, yeah. we're, we're scared of like spicing things up. <laughs> no, you know no. what I mean? Like, I well, want to call just... him Daniel. Don't you dare! If... <laughs> Do you know if you all go for a family meal, uh, th this one's for Frank. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But for me, it, I, I don't want to say laziness, but it's very like there's a lot of pressure on naming your kid, <laughs> and like there's a lot of long convos there to be had with the missus. So it's just easier saying, "No, it's Frank. That's it. It's done." Let's talk about something else. Jeez, was that a, how hard was it to persuade the wife into Frank? Go on, be honest, she, be honest. No, yeah, she was fine. 
Right? She didn't have a choice. I wouldn't get married. Is that like, is it like the, fir- the firstborn of every generation is called Frank? Is that just like a running Well, thing? yeah, since my, yeah, since, like I say, since, since my granddad. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just <laughs> tradition, isn't it? Um, so anyway, uh, Class. My, my dad, he, he started racing sidecars back when sidecars were massive. Oh, are we talking pilot or passenger? Pilot. Pilot. Yeah. So, so when he was young, he did, I think he did three TTs. Um, best finish of sixth, I think. Um, and uh, actually, there is a funny story there because um, a couple of years ago, someone said to me, he said, oh, did, did your dad have a yellow and black sidecar? I said, yeah, 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 yellow and black. He said, uh, did he have a crash at Sarah's Cottage? I said, yeah, he had a massive crash there. He said, oh, they found his fairing. So, yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so, literally... Um, I'm talking this maybe three, four years ago now. They've been renovating Sarah's cottage. Yeah. Um, and they cleared out all the grounds around it. And there's like a bit of debris and stuff there. And they pulled out his fairing that he chucked over the wall after his crash. Yeah, just, just to get rid of it. And it, it was like pristine. So I think the year after they actually put it on display <laughs> and like a bit of a backstory between it. But yeah, it'd been there since 17 nine or something like that 80 whatever yeah i've been there for a few I'm years i'm surprised your dad hasn't been back <laughs> over going out i want it back here yeah. <laughs> get it resold well they did they, they they asked like that yeah they asked if anyone owned it and wanted it back and uh i was like yeah let's get it back um and then we thought you know what, what we're gonna do with it <laughs> Just on the roof. <laughs> yeah it's a piece of junk in it so there's more meaning of it actually being on display over there um so he progressed through his career and he, he was um he, he was an engineer at British Aerospace, so very, very good, very clever man. So he spent his time working on his sidecar. At British Aerospace, correct. Fair play. That, yeah. That's a man who uses his fruit, that Chrissy. He and gets... also, <laughs> he was on the night shift, so even you could better. get away with even more. That's it. They must, they must be walking by the other lads going, he's a busy lad, the world <laughs> is always going. <laughs> um, and he actually went on to become European champion. Right. And uh, finished seventh in the world championship, doing everything himself as like a true privateer doing everything the hard way and you know he, he, i'd say at that time mid 80s sidecars mm. were kind of like the number two class behind 500s so you know it, it, yeah it was proper but um <laughs> i was born uh he lost his sponsor and <laughs> retired <laughs> right that, yeah. that, that that was a busy year God, yeah it was yeah. a busy year that, yeah, busy yeah. Oh, yeah. did you do solos as well or just, no, just, just sidecars second, yeah just sidecars i think it it started, he didn't have enough money to buy a bike and go racing. Right. With sidecars, there's two people, you go halves, it's, everything's halved. Yeah. And, um, you know, and they shared the passenger driver role and uh, he ended up being better at driving. So that's the way, you know, that, that, that that's the way he went. Um, what, what, do you know what got him in to the like sidecar thing? Uh, just obsessed with bikes, obsessed with, 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 with racing, just so- wanted to do it and, you know, you look back then and you think, fair play, there's there's no internet to go on and find out how to do it. Mm. You've, it must have been so hard to just suddenly go, right, do you know what, I'm going to go and race a sidecar. How do I go about that? How do you get your licence? You, where do you go? What clubs do you join? Yeah. Blah, 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 yeah. You do take that for granted, don't yeah, you? you do, it's yeah. mad, that. Yeah. We all, our generation, we just abuse the internet for, for rude what? things. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but when he, when he stopped, when he stopped racing... Because uh, he sort of prepared his own outfit, engines, blah, 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 blah. Um, he got people asking him to sort of start doing engine work and stuff. Mm. Um, and when he got enough people, he started engine tuning. So uh, he, I don't know, late 80s, 1990 maybe, he uh, started FW Developments engine tuning, two-stroke engines. So for years... The majority of 125s and 250s, certainly in this country, and a lot of work worldwide, would have been, uh, you know, would have been my dad's engines. Yeah. So. Fair play. It, we, we, like where we are now. No. So we we moved here in two uh, sorry 1996. Hmm. Um, so now we were a place down the road first. Um, yeah. I mean, to get as big as we are now and have this sort of premises from yeah. day one would have been impressive. But no, <laughs> he, he he just started out of his. Uh, you know, his double garage uh, next to his house. What was the What was the competition like in the country for like engine tuning? You know, if you, um, like you say, if he, he flood, if you 
he had the market, there must have been. I don't know. You'd probably have to ask him. And <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it, look, yeah, you, it's not just one person tuning engines. There's, no. You know, there's there's always competition, uh, and that's just good. Not as good but as your dad. I'd, yeah, I'd just say like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean. Don't quote me on this. He's probably one of the best two-stroke engine tuners in the world. And yeah. you know, I I raced myself, and I raced go karts for many years, and I benefited from that because I always had the fastest car on track. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. And it must have been awkward, like because obviously your competition, your competition would want well, yeah. your en- your as yeah. good engines as you, but they would know that they never <laughs> get the I best know, yeah. ones. Yeah. I've done the head wing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. A lot of my kart racing was, or my junior kart racing, um, was done in, uh, you know, like one make series and stuff like that, where everyone's engines were the same. Yeah. Uh, we did get caught out once, um, done some clever engineering that wasn't deemed quite legal. So. <laughs> Flexing the rules, that's Correct. what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, blip. The thing about karting, though, is it's, it, you know, you think, like, bike racing's close or whatever. If you go to a kart race, like, say, you half did. a tenth yep. is, like, yep. massive. Massive. And if you can't do lap times within two tenths a lap the whole race, yeah. forget it. And also, the, the money in it's quite a lot more than bike racing as well. So, if you've, say, if it's a one-make series and you've got, like, a, you've got, a, you know, like, a part that's going to give you 0.1 of a horsepower... You just the, it, basically you can just write a check to like whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, definitely. For I, I, the money in it. I'd it's say like that's mad. how it is now. I was probably the last generation of when it was sensible. Right. And you couldn't money didn't get you an advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So it was about talent and preparation and I effort. Rem- I remember speaking to it was a, another engine tuner actually. Yeah, like when I very first started racing, and he was t- we were talking about like sealed engines, and he was talking about cart, and he said it's you think it's fair, but he says what actually happens is the top teams and the top whatever they'll buy like twenty yeah, engines, and dyno the them all, yeah. and yeah. like the 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 wealthiest teams always still get the best engines. Yeah, it's just a yeah a long drawn out process. Mm. But, so when were you first put in a cart then? So, my racing career, um, I, I first I, I got I got a uh, I got a QR fifty, little mo- Honda motocross fifty. All oh, right. Uh, just before I turned four. Wow. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, my, my like my, my lads are like four and a half now and can't even ride a, a push bike. But, yeah, I, I was I was on a motorbike and I I just I spent all my time on it. Then I got a PW80, and then um, I know you've just had Birdie uh, on the podcast. He actually, between him and my dad, they bought me a KX60. Um, oh, they didn't hang about then, did I they? Know, they yeah. I know, well, this is where I would be, like, I don't know, eight yeah. by this time. And, and doing, like, schoolboy motocross. Well, no, it? so I never no. ended up racing it. That, that was the thing. So right. um, in that time, we'd moved here, hmm. and what now is the lake used to be a field. So perfect for, for motocross. And I was just not that good. Just either going too slow or when I was going fast, I was out of control and crashing it and just never really had the feel and got the sort of the, 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 the sweet spot for it. Um, then he ended up doing some work for a guy and in lieu of payment, swapped a go-kart. Right. And so I razzed around the car park here and was like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I, I, like, I, I want to go fell racing. In love straight away. Fell in love with it straight away. So, right, okay, you know, how'd you go racing, right? We'll go to Free Sisters, do my license. Um, at the time, John McGuinness's uh, younger brother, Kurt, he'd started uh, He'd started karting. Right. So we went. With, I did not know. Yeah. The so things we, you learned. So, yeah, so, so can I just say, Kurt will be chuffed a bit to get a shot. <laughs> <No, yeah. laughs> he put a thing on Instagram the other day wearing a chasing the racing hat, and uh, yeah, so big shout yeah, out to Kurt. Lad, Kurt. So, um, <laughs> um, you got any good stories about him? <laughs> yeah, Probably, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah we went with John uh, to go and watch Kurt race, and yeah, I think like you know within a month or whatever, I was sat on the grid for my first race, and yeah, so yeah. yeah we we raced with we we care for 
pretty much till he stopped, yeah. So what what was your dad's opinion on this? And you know, like the motocross and everything like that. And he thought, was he um, was he a little bit gutted that he didn't go down the no? Motorcycle? So I'd say, firstly, he wasn't. He's never been that pushy to. He's not a be motocross like, right, dad. You know, oh, you, you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. It just let me do what I wanted to do, um, and for him because he was so like busy at the time, a lot of customers. Mm. With a lot of customers and doing a technical job like engine tuning become, becomes a lot of problems, a lot of questions. Um, it was, a, I'd say, it was very refreshing for him to go to a different paddock where no one really knew him. Yes, and he could just get on with something because at the end of the day, racing should be fun and a hobby. Yeah, first and foremost, and then when you get better at it. That's when it becomes more serious and, uh, I, and I, professional. I could just see him standing on the top step and like, who's done your engine? And your dad's going, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare come near me. <laughs> and, and from a young age, was it, uh, do you know, the whole engineering and tuning side, were were you uh, drawn into that and like interested? Um, yeah, probably, I don't know. Yeah, probably at the time, not through choice, but the worst job you can do on a dyno is running engineering because it's just boring boring <laughs> and it's cold and it's just like half an hour of revving an engine so naturally as a kid that was always my job <laughs> so so yeah f yeah from that point of view yeah it was a great education to to get into in all fairness you know, i bet it, you know like the the caliber of engines your dad was tuning like over that time i bet you got to run in some mega bits, yeah. okay? like by the time you were like 15 i bet you'd been on some pretty nice bits yeah yeah um yeah it was more more running the car engines in that was was a pain and like you know he'd, he'd finish one of my engines he'd pass it me he'd be like right go and run that in so then i'd put it on the car um and yeah, run it in and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, I'd do all that myself at I don't know, 13, 14. And uh, I'll never forget the day that he gave me the wrong engine. And I actually ran an engine that was due to be rebuilt. So, so, so I'd gone through all this pain on the, on the dyno and I was like, oh, thank God that's over. And he's like, oh, I've got some bad news. Here's the engine you should have run in. <laughs> um, that one's got to be rebuilt. And it's probably the worst day what, of my life. What, what's the longest you've sat <laughs> running an engine in one sitting um do you do it all in one sitting that's the next question is it literally one continuous cycle yeah it, dep it, dep it, it depends i mean generally mm. we give engines half an hour right if a manufacturer says otherwise we'll follow what the manufacturer says so like the likes of your honda fireblade needs an hour right we've seen the new aprilia rs660 that needs 300 k's running in so that's like half a day. Jesus, well, because it was the BMW, like 500 miles. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to sit on a dyno for 500 you, miles. Do you? Bollocks. <laughs> it's like one gear at a time, isn't it? Yeah, bah, yeah, yeah. Bah, yeah. Bah, yeah. You're not learning hell. anything. You're not looking at anything interesting. Um, so, <laughs> do you know, that, do you know, actually. Going down the avenue of uh, when you were kart racing and then you got to, you ended up doing car engines, did that turn into a bit like bit of, like as part of the business now doing car engines or no. did you did you just sideline that yeah just, just bought kept, kept it for me yeah, oh, okay, yeah. No. I was thinking next time I'm running an engine maybe I should listen to a podcast hey perfect there you go <laughs> you'll, fall, you'll fall asleep on the <laughs> bye um, but yeah going going back to how Dynajet UK started um, and where we are now so my, my dad uh, he grew his engine tuning business and in the early 90s he was probably one of the well he was one of the first people in the UK to get a Dynajet dyno which kind of engine tuning at the time was probably more like a dark art hmm. where oh so and so's done it and oh yeah you know we give you a cylinder and like oh, they are, that's a good and yeah they, you know look at this that the other but at the end of the day and what dynos are about is actually measuring it yeah measuring your performance seeing what it's like so when he got a dyno and you know started using it his quality of work obviously went up and his results improved and um it you know instead of being your voodoo merchant so oh that's a good one it's like no that is good here's a dyno graph that shows how much power it's producing yeah. um and we've tested and changed and you know, made some much, made improvements on on the dyno to produce a better motorbike. Yeah. Um, and 
yeah, he, he, his business went from strength to strength. And then in around 2002, Dynojet were actually looking for a new uh, distributor for the United Kingdom. So they approached us to uh, take on take on Dynojet and he decided to s start a separate company. So now we have two companies here. So we have FW Development still, yeah. still tuning engines. We have Dynojet UK. Fair play. I tell you what, this is perfect marketing for you, but I've not heard of any other dyno bar, dyno jet. It's because they're the best. <laughs> Fair play there. Yeah, well <laughs> sold that man. Well sold that man. But like, no, seriously, how many other equipment? I've never, I've actually never heard of another dyno well, bar, you know, dyno jet. Right now in the UK, roughly how many dyno jets is there? Jesus. Good oh. question. A few hundred. Is it? Yeah. Right. And are they all on the phone to you asking for support? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that that's part of our job. It's a, oh, yeah, it's it's a technical product and we uh you know, we try and provide as good you know, good support, technical support. And I'd say that probably is a big part of what sets us apart from, from the competition. Yeah. Jesus, yeah, I, I was speaking to uh, Phil Crow, who's obviously um, my boss for this year, and he was—he's obviously just recently got a new Dino Jet, and he was—he was saying how good the system is, the uh, Teams thing. Where the, where yeah, the, did, he, did, he, did he mention that he had my number on speed dial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in terms of like FaceTime um, to Phil Crow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, Phil. Come. In, to, in terms of your service, like being able to yeah, so go online with you. Yeah, yeah. So we help them. Say if you buy if you buy a dyno, okay, you buy that off us. It's not a franchise sort of thing. Um, you're an independent business, but we're here for for the support like we do, but also training as well. So we'll train you how to use the machine and basically like look after you every step. Um, so yeah, Phil's just upgraded his dyno to the latest generation of electronics. Um, that is a massive improvement but it, with a massive improvement and it is a huge leap forward and you can do so much with it it takes a lot of learning yeah yeah he was, uh, say, he was saying i'm into this and and, and he's you know he's, he's he's a busy man so he needs to get the job done so instead of spending hours figuring stuff out it's quite just get on the phone to frank and i'll jump on team viewer and be able to take over his computer and quickly sort his issues out Mm -hmm. that's, that is and that that's all, and that technology has only just come out. The fact that you can well take over someone's computer. Well, no, yeah, on the dino jet yeah, element, that, uh, that is incredible. That might. Well, it's a win. Uh, you know, it's just a computer thing. So I tell you, you what, can take over someone's computer if you want. That's perfect. Teach me how, because <laughs> I could turn down like detune some bikes, couldn't I? Mm. You know, for the competition. I mean, I, you know, I've I've been on Team Viewer with people needing help with mapping. Mm. Um, not to name drop, but. I was once... Go on, name drop. Uh, Get him in there. I was once... Uh, uh, Michael Dunlop r r rings me and he's like, oh, I was struggling with his Motec or what, and something changing like that. And he'd managed to get... I don't even know what race he was at, so somewhere in Ireland. So he's in the middle of a field somewhere. Manages to get internet connection on his computer. I took over. I'm making all the changes. He's just stood there with his laptop. People are, like, walking by going, what the hell? Dunlop knows what he's doing on that. Don't he? Oh, wow, he does his own mapping. Like, oh, God, flipping heck. He's an impressive guy and all that. And uh, yeah, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> and brilliant. so he'd just be lapping it up, like, you know, actually pretending to move the mouse. There's, the, the, there's people coming up for an autograph. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm flat out. Just here. making some changes here. Yeah. Another big part of your, or a part brilliant. of the business and a part of the job is that you're the uh, dino supplier for BSB. So uh, over the race weekend, um, service for anyone in the paddock, but also in terms of the scrutiny and the technical re regulations. That's right. Yeah. So when we took, oh, when we started Dynajet UK, um, one thing we wanted to do to push the, push the brand and again provide the support for, for our products, power commanders, quick shifters, that sort of thing. Um, we built a dyno into a truck and that truck is still going strong. And that was 2002 when we did that, or whatever, 2002, 2003. And we, um, so we, yeah, we support British Superbikes, so we go to every round and also the TT. So we're at the TT for the full two weeks. And it's a funny situation to be in because you, you like, Sooner or later, you will dyno every single bike in that paddock. Um, so the amount of data and knowledge that's kind of on the computers and up here is is unreal, really. Mm, I bet I bet everyone, because obviously you're the one person that mm. <laughs> knows all the figures and like has every like all, all the questions that people want to know. Yeah, yeah. I bet you get absolutely. Ha I bet you don't can't even go for a drink in the bar. Everyone's just. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> everyone's hounding you for. Uh... Have you ever let it like the truth slip? You know, like someone's at the bar going like that, and he's on a faster bike, and you've just stuck your head in the middle, going, "Actually, 
you have a quicker bike than him, so what are you what are you playing at? <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time. <laughs> I'm definitely uh, staying yeah. away from you at the bar. Then. No, they're all just feel like, uh, you know, so, it is an annoying aspect of the job where, yeah. like, you know, and probably an, an annoying thing about racing is when people start to think like other people have got an unfair advantage when they haven't. Mm. And it's like, right, stop, concentrate on what you're doing and your results and it'll improve. Don't think you're at a disadvantage because you're not cheating or someone's got 10 horsepower more or so-and-so's up to this or so-and-so's up to that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, probably do, do put people straight quite a bit and just say, look, <laughs> you know, like, especially, what, what spe- especially with dads, it's like, <laughs> look, there's nothing wrong with your bike, it's your lad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what the woman you <laughs> There's your invoice. Yeah, <laughs> off yeah. you go. Bike, bike's good. Maybe, maybe a bit of rider coach. Go on this. <laughs> no, one um, one thing that we've kind of, we've kind of been touching on a little bit. And to be fair, some of these questions that I can ask on this podcast, you might just say like, oh, like it's confidential yeah, yeah, and I yeah. can't. But one big question that we've been talking about is. Uh, the the new Aprilia 660s like yeah. being added into the the yeah. s- the Super Twin class. Uh, obviously, we haven't had the, any of the national road racing f- like since it's been um, eligible for the class. So there's a big question mark. Lots of excitement about it, and I know that uh, you you work on some of the best of the competition, and also you've been working on developing the the Aprilia. Uh, ha- like, how do you think it's going to sort of fare, fare in super, the Super Twin class this year? Yeah, I'd say it's been quite a hot topic for that class. Um, and when you look at the bike, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and it, it's weird because all the other bikes, you're, sort of, you're taking a 60, 70 at best horsepower bike and trying to produce 100, 100 plus, which takes a lot of work. So when a bike comes out that's already high 90s, you think, oh, that's it, game over. It's at the start of its development. Is there much development to be to be done? Uh, we don't know yet. So, because um, how long has the bike been out on the market now? It's actually well, it's over a year. Isn't over it? a year, over but a year. Peop- I don't know because maybe the TT's not been on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, peop- it only seems like this winter people have jumped onto it. Seems to be that weird because mm. so, you like we were having a quick chat and you actually haven't had many. Through you've had them on the dyno, but yeah. you actually haven't had any on the on the block, shall we say? No, no, so, actually get yeah, so we've got one that we're doing now for Lee Johnston that yeah. we're um you know that, that that we're looking to develop and uh it's actually just sat there waiting for me to actually. give give it a run because it's just had to have its three hundred K. But in. But to be fair, I taught Lee how to use a dyno, so he's done most of that. Right? Yeah. Really? Like, like I say, exactly it's the world's quiet. it's the world's most boring job. So no, no, I let him do it. <laughs> no, it's good to see that Ryan, like you know, like Michael getting in, like yeah, actually yeah, getting yeah. it on the laptop, and like Lee Johnson getting on the laptop and like getting getting stuck in. It's mm. uh, pretty intimidating. I better come to one of your courses. <laughs> better learn how Again, to do it. I, I don't. I don't think you'll be able to answer this one because things. But what's I bet, the figure? I, no, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, go on. I, I was going to say. I bet you've uh, over the years. I bet you've seen some right sort of cowboy. <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah. you know people who have like done the old tune and that and it's just become, yeah yeah uh, I guess you were more be... funny than anything though and it? it's like you know I'm always fair and we'll, we'll give you know honest feedback and you know at the end of the day what happens in the dino room happens on track so if someone brings a bike that is down on power he's already going to know it's down on power because it doesn't yeah. perform very well yeah. So mm-hmm. you're not like breaking someone's heart by saying, you know, oh, oh, look, that bike you've been riding, it's not as good as you thought it was because they know. They already know. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of the, I know a few superbike teams have been based here. Over, I don't know if they're still based here, but you've, I know in the past you've had various BSB teams mm. based here. Are you well, are you currently working on many superbikes? Yes. Yeah. So, well, going going back to the teams that we've had based here. So when we moved when we moved to to, to where we are now. Um, Obviously, you've been for a bit of a look round uh, tonight. It's quick swim. It, it, quick swim, yeah. <laughs> it's it, 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 it's a pretty good facility. Yeah. Um, and for a race team, uh, it, it is actually perfect because you know a race team that we're working with. So they're on site with the people that tune their engines, do the dyno work, do the mapping. Um, you've got a lovely workshop, place to park your truck, etc. So. We we have had a lot of race teams based here over the years. Currently, we don't have any race team work out of here. 
Um, the last race team that we did have was Bournemouth Kawasaki, and when they stopped doing BSB, obviously they um, they saying, moved you out. Get, you, you couldn't nearly get any further away. From I know, Bournemouth yeah, all yeah. The way up here. That's a hell of a trip. Yeah, it's funny. We were in it, like we went to the pub one night and. Uh, like some people walk past like because we've gone in the team van or whatever yeah. and some people walk past and they were like oh flipping out they're a long way from home and I thought like you're obviously into your bikes but you've got no idea that they're actually based a couple of miles up the road <laughs> good good for security mind because they'll all be going around there trying to rob <laughs> yeah, them and yeah. it's actually up here yeah. that's ideal um, you mentioned just before about having close connections with Birdie from, and obviously we've yeah. had Birdie on before so we were sort of talking about the earlier days and uh like say when he was going to World Superbikes and like you were doing the engines there and yeah. whatever, but since going to Ducati, the them them engines come more ready tuned, don't they? Yeah. So, like, basically, when Birdie uh, decided to go set up his own race team, You're twenty six was he? Was he twenty six? No, he packed in racing at twenty six. No, mm-hmm. it was twenty six, wasn't he? I don't know. Yeah, it was a... <laughs> How old does he say he is now? <laughs> do <you> mean, <laughs> Let's no, work it out. out. <laughs> yeah, just do the maths on yeah. that side of things. But do you mean you like go. when he first went to Superbikes? No, I, no. When he when he first started Paul Bird Motorsport, I think it was like ninety six or six. Yeah. Like so um, I think one of the first riders he started sponsoring was Chris Palmer. Um, yeah, and yeah. That, and then I think the year after he was like, right, okay, let's start a race team. Wanted my dad to do the engines. Came to my dad for a lot of advice, and they became best friends. And um, so it, it was amazing, like kind of growing up with that. And you know, people say X, Y, and Z about Birdie, but he he is a genuinely nice guy. And you know, I'll never forget. I was probably eight, eight, nine year old, and he drove down in his Honda and SX, which was like. Just blew my mind because, like, like at the time, wow, this must be the best sports car in the world. And uh, you know, he he drove down from Penrith an hour to come down here, pick me up, and take me up to Carlisle to watch Carlisle pre- play Preston North End in the FA Cup, um, in his director's box or whatever. Just me and him. Then drove all the way home, dropped me off. Like best day of my life. <laughs> and you know, you don't forget things like that. And no. you know, the amount of riders and people that he's helped over the years and what he's given to the sport is is amazing so when he started um he based his race race team here and it was only when he got the factory kawasaki deal and they went world superbike that they built the um the warehouse and the workshops that you see now and basically they outgrew us because when they when they became the official kawasaki world superbike team there was just too many people here in the you know it, it, it was pretty chaotic and uh but when they moved out, we still worked really closely yeah. together. So through the Kawasaki era, uh, the championships were shaky and stuff. Um, you know, we did all the en- engines, dyno work, blah, 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 blah. Um, only when they went to Ducati, we kind of were, weren't really needed because you, you, it's ready to go from Ducati. So, um, Is that the case? Right. Yeah. I did not know that. So well, pretty much... No, no, no. It's the engines good. are, yeah. So you just get an engine, right, bolt it in and right. away you go. Yeah, pay your money. Right. There we go. I thought they might have. I thought he, like road bikes as normal. They get him. Cause I, I know he spent a lot of. What he gave us a figure, didn't he, on the show? I can't mind on the figure, but each engine was worth. Yeah, I think it's like thirty thousand euro or something like each that. Each engine, Jesus. And, he's, and they'll have like eighteen sat in the workshop. My God, there you go. How many? How many staff work here then? Here. Yeah. So we're a very sort of streamlined team. Mm. So my mum and dad are kind of semi-retired now. So he. He picks and chooses what he wants to do. Yes. Uh, but day to day work and day to day running, uh, it doesn't really get involved. Um, there's me and my wife Zara, um, but we've got two young kids, so time's a bit split for Zara there as well. Yeah. Uh, then we have um, two people in the office on sales and etc. Yeah. And then sort of on the technical side, there's myself and Richard who works for us who who lives in at uh, various events and. On the engine tuning side, we have Ian, our engine builder. So not wow. me. That is incredible. <laughs> no, it is because when you yeah. think about the, like, the amount we, of we, engines we, that could... we get through a lot of work. Yeah. Jesus, Webb, that is that is impressive. I was expecting a lot, like to be blunt, a lot more people in. But that. it's the sort of job where you need to really trust who's doing the work, and yeah. it's not. Oh, you know, you can't just throw men at it, and it, you know, it take years to train someone and. 
you know, it gets to a point where it's just like, oh, it's just easier doing yeah. it ourselves. Yeah. And like our engine tuning business, um, again, not saying that we really pick and choose that much, but we do sort of just focus on your likes of your super sport class, your mm. super bike class, and have good teams that we work with um, that keeps us busy enough that we're not stretching ourselves. Yes. And is less aggro because you're working together. Mm -hmm. Yes, understandable. Because it's one of those, because like when you see anywhere, like a bike for sale, for example, like a race bike, and it's like the Frank the Frank Raffle, like FW yeah. name yeah. attached to it is a selling point massively. It's 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 designer almost, shall yeah. we say. It's yeah. like, bloody hell, that must be quick. Do you know, it is. Do you know in terms of like the phase out from two strokes to four strokes, yep. did that tie in with your dad kind of not doing less work and sort of semi-retiring and you mm. taking over? Mm. With no, him? no, so it was before. So uh, were you shit out of tuning two strokes as well? No, sorry. <laughs> No, it it happened before I really came into the business that much. Right, right, got right. It. You know, what yeah. I mean that the it was early two thousands. So do you not really do much with two or haven't done too much with two strokes? Is it more mapping and like the yeah, more give me a fuel injected four stroke. That's yeah, bread and where, butter. That, yeah, that's what what you know what what I do and what I need to do. Yeah. However, um, you know, I do like two strokes mm -hmm. and. My dad still does do a little bit of two stroke work on the side. I, I was about to ask yeah. that because at the end of the day, like when the, if you speak to anyone, two stroke era racing was just the be all and end all, and it's like the black art system yeah, of yeah, it, and yeah. it's getting your eye in and yeah. everything like that. So how gutted was he when the four stroke era started arriving? He wasn't. He That's wasn't good. He, you know, he's always moved with the times. Yes, adapted, um, and grown. So, yeah. yeah, he wasn't just right. Okay, no worries. Two strokes are dead. With four stroke engine tuners now, so there we are. yeah, changed like and you know, we had a cu couple of staff changes and stuff like that over the sort of transition years, should we say? And mm. uh, yeah, we're in a good place now, but <laughs> it, it's a shame, like, because two strokes are coming back, they're, like, well, you know, like you tell us, it, like, yeah, so like, coming back? well, no, sorry, I don't mean like coming back as in they're gonna start making them, but right, people want to restore old bikes, yes, it's booming. Two strokes are like, you know what people want yeah uh and even racing you know people want to go r race a 98 tz 250 or, or, or whatever so um it, yeah it'll hate me saying this because people still ring up for two short work and it you only want to do it for select people right because it's not worth the aggro because if something goes wrong it's your fault and blah blah blah, blah. but you could make a, a, a good living for, uh, from from just doing two strokes still but you need that knowledge and that experience, I and mean, without living through it, I don't know where you'll pick that up yes, from. So it's such a limited number of people. A, yeah, so like there is like a box of jets just dad, rolling around on the yeah, van yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your dad will be coming out of retirement. <laughs> so you know, people yeah. say like, "Oh, oh, you're not gutted that like your dad hasn't taught you know, yeah. not that like, you know, are you sorry, not that he's not taught you, but you've not learned from him that how, how you can do it." And I'm like, well. No, because it, it's different, and you need to you, you need to have lived through it and learnt yourself through it. You know, a lot of people do, uh, you know, put cylinder head porting, do it on a flow bench. You know, rely on the results from a flow bench. He doesn't. It's all up here. That's proper. That is, yeah. that is proper. <laughs> do, do you know? Uh, sorry, just going back to the sort of super bikes and like horsepower figures and yeah. stuff. Do you know? In for example, in the last ten years, so yeah. since two thousand twelve till now. Max power yeah. of back, of British super bikes yeah. has it uh, increased much? Has it been massively? Much? Yeah. So really? yeah, jobs changed, um, and I'd say the and I hate this term game changer was when BMW brought the S thousand RR out for the first time. Yeah, because that was a hike in power over everything else. Was that in stock trim? This is yes. or, yeah, right, yeah. and then that's right. forced every, everyone else. And that's forced every, everyone else. So whereas like. <laughs> You know, two hundred horsepower was like the holy grail. Yes. But you know what? It's hundred and ninety. That's that's enough. Blah yeah. blah blah. Um, you know, two hundred and twenty is normal now. On a super bike. Yeah. You know, but you get a Honda Fireblade out of the box. Run it. You know, put an Acroprovic system on it. Run it in. It's two between two hundred and ten and two hundred and fifteen horsepower. Jesus wept. Mm. Before you do any work. Before you it. do any work on it. 
Wow. Is that is the wow. Honda the highest stocker? Yes. It's got to be now, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Out of all the top bikes, so between 210, 215, that must be like one of the highest. Yeah, so when, when it, there is an art to measuring the power. Mm. So it, it it's not straightforward because we are, we, we're on a chassis dyno, so we actually put the whole bike on. Yeah. We're measuring the power through at the back wheel through the tyre. So your compound of your tyre actually and has an effect on, on your reading because the way that tyre interacts with the drum can affect your reading. So like a race tyre or a slick could could read like, say, 10 horsepower less than a uh, yeah, you know, for, the, 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 than a road tyre. Because I was about to say, because for a lot, like a lot of our listeners, I won't, I've never probably even seen a dyno or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Is yeah. it, a lot of teams turn up with another wheel with a proper, hard, horrible yeah, road so, tyre on it just for that reason, isn't it? For that it? reason, yeah. You're not, you're not inflating your figures. You yeah. just want a true figure. Yes. Um, and a consistent figure. So if you're making changes, mm. say, you know, someone came one day, went went off, made a load of technical changes to the bike, wanted to see if it was any better, brought it back the next day with a different tyre on. Forget your data. It's out of the window. So what's the difference? Can you... Is it, is it a consistent figure between crank to tyre? No. It, no, so it's literally... Uh, that reading's not like it's so... Say knock ten brake off no. for the crank that it's literally that people varies. do people do that or, yeah. or or whatever but the only way of doing it would be measure it uh, but even then you've still got your tire sticking to the drum mm. that causes problems both on negative horsepower and positive horsepower I don't want to get too uh, I was about to say because these, <laughs> these questions must keep you up and like you know it's the fact of like even humidity in the air yeah, can yeah, change yeah. the results yeah so it? the dyno has a weather station. Hmm. So it, we look at humidity, air pressure, air temperature, and then based on that, apply a correction factor so that technically you can run a bike in winter, freezing, cold day, lots of oxygen in the air, and then in summer, hot, humid day, and they should be comparable. That's a theory, but in the real world, it doesn't work. So right. you get you become a bit of a weatherman doing this job. It's like, right, good dyno day. Yeah. Bad dyno day. And... You know, Incredible. you can even get to the stage where when you, the, the, the harder you push an engine and develop a bike, you're into diminishing returns. So your first five, 10 horsepower is cheap, easy. Every, you know, everyone can get there. Yeah. Your next five horsepower that does make the difference hmm. is a slog. And when you're looking for your last half a horsepower, you can get to one day and go, do you, do you know what? We'll just abandon this. We'll, we'll, we'll come back when the weather's better. Yeah, just in, like the amount of variables that you have to chuck. Like, but when you think about it, it's obvious. If there's hmm. more oxygen in the air, more oxygen going into your engine, you get burn. you get a bigger explosion and you produce more power. Yeah. So in terms of like the the most common thing you'll be doing, no, if like if someone came here on a random date, are you most likely to be sat on a dyno changing fuel and to try and get more power out of motorbikes? Is that like? Yeah. Um. Again, it's a really interesting job. It it varies. Your bread and butter, if you will, is sorting the fueling out because if the right amount of fuel is going into the engine for given the RPM throttle position, that is going to optimize it, make it the, the the best it can. And when a bike isn't like that, um, that's where it's not when it's not running very nice. So whether that be a road bike that is snatchy on the throttle, hard to ride round town, uh, or is a bit slow, mm. um, or a race bike that isn't performing as it should be, or you don't, the, you know, the rider doesn't have the feel on the throttle. However, going back to how power figures have changed in the past 10 years, um, the biggest issue is grip hasn't really changed. So grip, so you know, you've got 20 more horsepower, but laying that on the ground has now become incredibly dif difficult. Yeah. And in a series like British Superbikes, you're, you're on a, a controlled, electronic, uh, controlled electronics package, so you're on a MoTeC ECU. And within that, there isn't um, traction control or anti-wheelie strategies. So when you've got a bike that's an animal, mm. having someone very good to map it and calm it down uh, is massively important. So it's when it comes, it? yeah, when, I mean, yeah, like I say, bread and butter, feeling, just making bikes perform at their optimum, um, you know, making them more, more economical, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when you yeah come to a 220 horsepower plus super bike, we know which you know you're going to know very well. Um, <laughs> the connection between the rider's wrist and what's going on at the back tire is the most important thing. Mm. 
and if that isn't right, then either you're going to be spinning up or you're just not going to be fast. No. I remember from I, that short spell that I did in Superbikes with a Martin Halsell's team, I remember the first time I rode, or the first one or two times I rode that, I could not get any power down without it wheeling. Mm-hmm. And I remember the Italians came over here and spent a couple mm-hmm. of days, and it was actually like taking loads and loads of power out of like first and second gear actually allowed us to accelerate much better much faster because there was just literally like you just touch the throttle and so it went did up you did you ride it at knock hill yes yeah so was it knock hill where you were struggling back? that was my first ever go on okay, a super bike right. yeah. Yeah. yeah and and uh yeah it, like say coming out the hairpin it like it was just a little bit of throttle and wheelie and it was like almost impossible to yeah. to accelerate hard without a wheelie yeah. and then i remember the, the i think uh, alessandro, whoever, alessandro yeah. came over and spent like two days with you or whatever and got it like absolutely mint um, but yeah, it's, it sounds counterintuitive to take power out to go faster. Yeah. But yeah, but again, it comes down to you, sort of your experience, and you know we see a lot of stuff, and I'd be able to analyze a bike and say where it would be difficult to ride, or um, you know where its issues will be, and if you can sort it. A lot of bikes now have got electronically controlled throttles. That's just a dream because if you if you can map a a, 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 th- a throttle map on a bike you can essentially like put in a characteristic of the bike that would previously be impossible so taking power out and stuff like that uh just don't open the f- don't open the throttle because mm. of the, you as a rider you know you, you want to get to a wide open throttle as soon as possible because that's what goes yeah. forward that's how, how you go fast is that etv chart engine yeah, throttle well, valves uh yeah whatever you want to call it fly by wire ride by wire um yeah ETV. See, it's one. It's one of those. It's like it's. It's always going to be that argument forever and ever and ever. And I know car technology's had that for a long, long time. But it's almost taken the rider ability a little bit more out of it. Is that a fair comment to say, in your opinion? Because like that technical or technical. No, not really. Right? Um, no. Because uh, being able to come in and te- like it, it's it's interesting because it's so much more. The bike's more meeting up with the rider now, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, you need that balance all the time. But isn't I'd it? say it's always been like that, right? You know, you've you, even with the two-stroke eras, kind even, of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah if you if, if your bike didn't handle, yeah, the rider didn't make up for it. Yeah. You, you, you understand what I mean? So, yeah. like, but was that more chassis or like more characteristics? Yeah, I'd say. Well, and... yeah, I'd say, no, yeah, probably yeah, more more chassis. But yeah, yeah, okay. So now you've got another element into it. Yeah. This your is electronics the... <laughs> and your engine. Yes. Um, because of that much more power. Yeah. So because like like you were saying, it, it's mad how you can go up for like figures like nearly two hundred and forty brake horsepower, but then essentially it's like that's it's too much, isn't it? It, it is it, too it, much. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, I know, like what we just said, it's you can't compare like for like for like different days and all that sort of thing. But and I'm, I'm not sure if you can answer this one, but uh, after a track like a competitive track session at BSB over all of the years, what's the highest power reading you've ever seen yep. come off the track? Um, I think the the highest we ever saw, I think, would be at the TT, and I can't remember what year, but it was when Michael was on. He won the senior on a BM. Right, and that was the highest figure I'd you've ever probably seen. Probably say so, yeah, in race trim. At BSB, we don't dine other superbikes as much as other classes uh, because the rules are that bit more open, and they're on a control ECU, so you've got. Uh, the lads from Motec there that can plug in and kind of s- do the but yeah so like if we you know we're there to like help police the the classes and you know help with scrutineering and things that we'd be looking for um, in say a stock class would be your power and your power curve so we can see if it's been instantly see if yes. someone's cheating basically yeah um, and. It, out of, sorry, out of curiosity on that side of things. So, you get a bike wheeling up the ramp in the oars and everything like that. So, what is the situation for that? Do you just, you wouldn't obviously tell the rider or anything like that, or do you have to go and tell that information well, to no, the well, organisers? The, 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 inf- the information te- yeah. technically belongs to the organisers. So Right. Yeah. Um, it's quite easy because people are used to us doing it and being yes. there because we've done it for so long that yeah. it is part and parcel of being in that championship right okay I've finished in the top six right I'll go straight to the dyno you know because like when you think about it it's quite a weird thing to hand your pride and joy over just to some random guy who's gonna take it to the rev limiter and yeah you know the hurt locker yeah exactly yeah so um but the, the, you know it's part of the part of the rules yeah and, and 
uh, people get used to it. So, uh, you know, very, on, very, you know, the, 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 pretty much everyone's happy to do it. And, yeah. and, and you get to know people. Can you, could you say roughly what that figure was or can you not About say? About 230, I think. Wow. On the BM at that Two, time? High, high 220s, I'm pretty sure. Jesus wept. Yeah, there's a lot. And I'd say, have you ever had a World 2 bike or MotoGP bike on? No. no. Right? No. That's it. I'd, no. I'd like to. So what, what like, dynos do they use at, like, MotoGP? Do they I don't think they do. Right? It just, it is what it is. Yeah. If you want to put the power down, you put the power down, and so on. Yeah, I mean, they'll have, obviously, they'll have strict technical, uh, you know, uh, checks and stuff like that. But, yeah, as far as chucking on the dyno and seeing what it is, but... What should it be? Yeah. You know be what I mean? What, 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 what should it be? It, be? Like, if if you put a super bike on and it's 250 horsepower, it'd be like, well, that's good. But hang on, have they just done a really, really good job of tuning it? <laughs> it'd be good to see, though, wouldn't it? Just see it flash up. It'll Interesting be... to get, uh, especially world super bikes on, because obviously they, they are a fair bit more tuned yeah. than, say, BSB. So you'd expect, like, if, if BSB is sort of around 230 it, max. It's would... always been a, a shame because had we not. If we didn't do the TT, because there's always the Donington round that clashes with the TT, and mm. pretty much every year, Scott Smart gets on the phone, please, can you come to Donington? <laughs> and, he, and he'd be like, oh, that'd be really interesting, but no, not the TT, sorry. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we've not done it. Now, am I correct? The only class that you don't do at the TT is super sport. And super bike. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think which one. No, because it's like super Side, stock sidecars. Yeah, one. sidecars definitely don't get rolled <laughs> up there. Jesus, well, no, but um, no, like you have to like at the TT. The so you have to get you have to get your bike. Uh, yeah, okay. Ha- so yeah, previously it's been. It, it previously it's been like every super twin bike has to come and get checked. Yes. Uh, one year we did every every super twin, every super sport, and every super stock. Yes. And bearing in mind, That's a lot, lot of people ride the stocker in the. Super bike. It's basically every bike there, yeah. and it were it, you know it was too much, and that became apparent. And we've sort of changed it now to kind of like ch- ch- pick and you know just ch- cherry pick bikes and, yeah. and get them checked. But then after uh, after the race, we do say the top six. Yes, you know the ones that really matter. And on the odd occasion, if something rings any alarm bells, like a massive speed trap figure. Or yeah, something. which we did have. And it was a funny story, really. Yeah, go on. <laughs> share, 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 share. So, share. <laughs> like, we do a lot. Obviously, we do a lot of checks and stuff like that. And at BSB, like, okay, yeah, another ZX6, an R6, right? Yeah, 120, 120, right? Yeah. It's not boring, but it's not that exciting when they're all legal. So, <laughs> so well, your just, job is to well, yeah, check it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and say at BSB, just as being there and doing that process stops people doing something it's a deterrent, isn't it's it? a deterrent yeah, yeah. yeah. um however <laughs> this one i'm like i thought flipping heck he's quick through through the speed traps there that 2015 or 16 maybe and uh the <laughs> it was uh adrian ghost was the uh scrutineer of the tt at the time and adrian came over he said right we'll, we'll do top six so it's these numbers here and, oh yes and he's like oh and and this one well, looks out well well, why, why, why are we bothering with that? Why are we dynoing that one? So oh, it seemed a bit quick through the speed traps. I went, oh yeah. I said, do you know what? I saw that as well. He went, yeah. It's a, um, it's a GSXR six hundred. I, I mean, so I <laughs> you know what sounding now is <laughs> obvious, isn't it? But uh, you know, it's a GSXR six hundred. I mean, <laughs> it, and then he laughed. He went, uh, you know, at least it's not a seven fifty. It wasn't that quick. And I went, all right, yeah, sound. He said they might have just done a really good job, but it needs checking. Can I just say before you say this, I'm pretty sure who had, I can't remember who the rider was, but I'm pretty sure we have had him on the show. And Possibly, I, yeah. I think he told this story. Did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and he's a good lad as well. Um, and he didn't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm looking for right. Okay, GSXR 600 should be about, you know, if if it's mid 120s, they've done a good job out of it because it is one of the lower powered super sport bikes. First run, I mean, like the oil's not even hot. It's just like you know, you've got to give a few runs to like get, to get them up to power. First run's just 150 horsepower, uh, and like I'm just, Jesus, what? I, I think I've done the top six already, and like you go through the gears and like with TT gearing on, it's like what, what. This thing got on. I'm like, what, what, what? what? Wow, this has got some going. <laughs> so the next run I'd done it, it's like 152 horsepower. I stopped. I went, uh, I says to Adrian, I said, um, you, it's legit. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, you know, you said at least it's not a 750. He's like, 
to nine hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went. It's a tuned seven fifty. And it was, it was a tuned, fully tuned 750. <laughs> Jesus wept. I tell you what, this is, this is Matt Nautley. I don't remember who that was, and I can't think. I've got the name in my head, but I'm not saying yeah. it all live. But told, I, I, well, I don't think we had a chat on air, off air. I think he told us about it. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. he tells that fact. But I tell you what, what's in, like, is this, am I correct in saying, well, I, I, they haven't released the regs on the 600s yet for the TT? No. No. So. Well, do, you want know, what, do you want to know what they are? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, well, what's what's the crack in here? terms of what? Well, it's a bit like because P. Aikman was saying they were running the seven six five. Yeah, so that'll be allowed in at the TT. So that is now yeah. the good thing is this pod's not out anyway a couple of weeks away. So hopefully, but they're they're, they're literally finalising the the rules now. So your rev limits and stuff like that. And the it, big the big question for Dom is: it, it, are they going to be running a six hundred or six three six, or will six three sixes be eligible? Good question. Can't remember. You see, that's so the obviously thing. they are at World running... Championship, but no. well, that, that's it. Because isn't a seven six five like a hundred uh, acclaimed? I've never seen one on the dyno myself, but like a hundred and fifty brake. <laughs> like, forget Jesus wept. There won't be a bike that you haven't seen. There you go. But like a hundred and fifty brake horsepower, and then no. the de- no. What's Again, seven? this is going back to an, an annoying thing about racing and stuff like that. Yes. Rumors go around, or no, no one's going to be able to compete with Hickman. You know, there might not be it anyway because he's oh, absolutely un- unbelievable around the TT. But there we are. Um, but he isn't going to have a massive advantage for being on a 765 Triumph. So, yeah. I was quite involved in balancing the the, the, the regs. Yeah. Um, so, Scott Smart's God, he's in control. Right. So, he's the head of the, he's the FIA, uh, FIM technical guy. Because and talking of teams that we've had based here, Scott used to actually run, run his bike when he when he ran himself he used to run out of these workshops so there we are. yeah so he used to live in this car park for a bit there we are <laughs> but for, for not many people knowing it's a case of like um the tt is singular you know yes, they, can is, actually, yeah. Yeah. they can pick what rules they want to yeah. do so they can go down fim world or they can go down like bsb rules or they can make up they can essentially yeah. do anything yeah. they want so it's a bit my so next it, it is an, yeah it's an event on its own with its own set of rules yes. but Obviously, that's got to be a sensible set of rules that does somewhat follow yeah. the standard set by other race series. The two being British Superbikes and World, world you know, World Superbikes. Yeah. So it's a funny time when it comes to Super Sport Class at the minute because I've, they've kind of been between a, a, a rock and hard place of what to do with what bikes they let in because yeah. the 600... Uh, sports bikes aren't selling them manufacturers aren't making them um, so they've gone down the path of basically opening up the regs yeah so if you're a bike manufacturer it doesn't really matter if it's 600 what CC it is if you can produce a bike that produces over 140 horsepower uh, and say if you need to make a kit to get it up there produce that kit and then electronically we'll control that to fit into the regulations so it has to have an electronic uh, throttle on it and has to run a certain ECU. And then what will happen is the throttle will be restricted uh, accordingly to make the bike same as the rest. Right, because that like cause I'm going on Fran Counting's um, 600 yep. and that's f- oh, well, it's not a fly-by-wire throttle. No. It's, so that'll still be eligible, is that, yes. that's correct? Yep. So, because it's at a disadvantage. Yeah, be- because, so the, yeah, so you've got your two sets of regs now. So your normal 600 Supersport regulations and what they're calling the next-gen Supersport. So your next-gen Supersport at a minute, and I'm pretty sure at the TT you're only going to have the Triumph 765. So but the, the, there's the Ducati V2. I was about to ask, because yeah. they're going to let... Now, what's the Ducati on CC on paper? Seven, seven, eight hundred? Nine, nine, five, nine. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, right. There yeah. you go. So, right, bloody it's hell, this is so nice. you, right kind so of So you, you put a Tri Options Ducati bike on the dyno at, at, at the track, and it's 152. Yeah, is a good one. Um, the benchmark in British Supersport would be uh, your Appleyard Macadam bikes. Yeah. Um, who we actually do all their engine work and have done for years, and that's also another race team that was based here uh, for quite a while. Um, and their bikes are 140 horsepower. So what we did at the start of last year at the BSB tests, because everything was unknown, it's, you know, um, we got like the Apple Yard bikes on a couple of other R6s, say Jack Kennedy's 636, uh, mm. one of the Gearlink 
like ZX6s, measured them all as accurately as possible, and then then we put the Triumph on with a one-to-one -one throttle, so just wide open throttle throughout the rev range. Mm. And then I'll basically just reduce the throttle here, there, body, body, blah, to manipulate what they had. Yeah, to make, so, to make it level yeah, with. Yeah. So never at any point was it 150 horsepower, even unrestricted. Right. And then now it, it's restricted, so it is. It's 140, 141 horsepower. So what's going to be interesting at the TT is, so is, is the bike going to have to go on the dyno before practice? Like not, I don't know how they're going to do it because, it could, yeah. well, technically you shouldn't really need to because that throttle, your mapping in the World Supersport ECU is locked, locked down. Right. So you can't access it. Right, so you'd have to buy that wire and loom regardless. Yes, so you have to run on that. So you right. can't, you, say you couldn't go now, and buy a buy 636. A, yeah, but, you know, buy a 765 street triple, turn it into a race bike, rock up at the TT. What? Because to fit in within the rules, it has to have a certain kit on it, certain electronics on it, everything's controlled. Hasn't that work like low double? Because they're going to have to almost pre-police the bikes, is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a bit like, like you're saying, it's normally in an old-fashioned, it was like the top six or anything outstanding kind yeah. of thing. So. Bloody hell, they're going to have to police it prior, uh, yeah, in theory, not, you know, in, yeah, to not, make it fair yeah, you know, throughout yeah. the whole grid. Yeah, but, like I say, it's not a worry. There's only one Frank Rafa Jr. No, yeah. <laughs> but it's not a worry now because, I, like, as far as I'm aware, there's probably only going to be Hickman on one. Right. Have, you, have you ever counted how many championships you've won altogether, by the way? Like, engine, the, the customers that have yeah, won championships. Yeah, good question. No. So there'll be, like, a ridiculous <laughs> amount in, like, yeah, yeah. PSP and Super Sport. Um, yeah, I mean, in recent times, so we've won, we've won the British Super Sport, uh, British Superbike Championship with uh, when Birdie ran the Ducatis the first time round. So with Hislop um, and Shaky, and then with the Kawasaki, I think Shaky won it two or three times, um, and then with Leon Haslam, uh, last time he ra raced in British Superbikes. So that's when Bournemouth were, were based out of here, and we obviously did a lot, lot of uh, a lot of work with them um, in. British Super Sport, uh, I think App Apple Yards maybe won four in a row. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, those four. But even sort of bikes that we haven't done done, done the engine for, we could have some sort of input. It's like, take, um, you know, I did quite a bit of work with, um, with Dave Tyson on Jack Kennedy's bike last year. You know, we didn't do their engines, but, uh, you know, the bike came here and went through the mapping and stuff like that. And, mm. uh, so I don't know. Count that one. <laughs> it's weird with the six three six and the six hundred because on on paper, I think like say if you look, you would know, but if you looked at the dyno figures, um, uh, presumably they would be quite similar. Yeah. But on the yeah. watching from the sidelines, it looked like the uh, six hundred looked like noticeably faster. Well, the R six. Yeah, it was a better. Bike. No, no, this uh, like say Ben Curry on the okay, yeah. Kawasaki six hundred yeah. and Jack Kennedy on yeah. the six three six. See a lot as well. It's about how it makes the power, how it hangs on to the power. Um, the biggest thing between those two bikes is uh, that the 636 is restricted on RPM, so it's 500 RPM less. And that RPM you can see on track. Right. Uh, so if the 636 could rev to 16,000, not 15.5, it would be a little bit quicker and com more comparable to the 600. Because it seemed to struggle out the exit of the turns. You know what I mean? Jack, Jack like, he was rattling the chassis. You know, when you watched him, yeah. he was just da, 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 trying to get that mitt, like that exit torque out the turn. Like, once he got the gallop on the straights, I don't think he was anything less, just as strong even. But mm. it was like corner exit. He he struggled. And this is Jack Kennedy we're talking about. The, the bike seemed Yeah, but lacking. you've got to ask yourself a corner exit there, is he a wide open throttle? Probably not. So he's probably got the power under it, maybe just a bit of grip or whatever on the day. So. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. So many variables. So many there? variables. Oh, especially yeah. in your game, Jesus. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so many variables. So, of, uh, looking ahead into the season, are you um, obviously you're not working directly with any teams this year? Who, who's your sort of, uh, who's your firm favourite for the championship? Superbikes. Yep. And who's your outside pick? You're going to upset someone. Brilliant. Um, look, hands down, you've got to say the Yamaha is going to be hard to beat because that's the benchmark. It, Looked the best bike last year. Uh, There's another two of them this year as well, isn't there? Yeah, but I'd still think it'd be the, the raceways bikes that'd be the ones to beat. Because um, they took a big leap, haven't they? Really? Mm. 
Wait, is that not a fair comment? Like yeah. last year they turned up and it was just like, gee, it was up practically the same as a Ducati, yeah. really, down the straight. It was like, bloody hell. Yeah. So, but I've, I'd, I'd say handling wise and the way it looked after its tyres, it'd be its biggest strength. Mm, right. and, and you could sort of see the way that they could go into the corners and stuff like that. It, 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 was, it was, yeah, it was dialed in. It was, yeah. So, <laughs> going back to what we said previous about no new models coming out, what's going to change for this year? So probably mechanically not that much. Yeah. So that's going to be the bike to beat. Yes. Um, but what we have got is Sykes coming back, and we've got Haslam coming back. Mm. Um, so. I had to put a tenner on it. Go on. <laughs> um, I'll say. I think the title will go back to PBM. Right. And possibly Brooks. Right. If, if they can get all their issues ironed out, I think it's, it's one of those championships that any rider can win on the day. Mm. But pure championship winners need to do it week in, week out. Yeah, consistency. And that's what Brooks has, has kind of always had, apart from last year. I was about to say, because last year was a, was it just wasn't Brooks, was it? No, no. But they're putting the effort into sorting that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And hopefully they do because it's not, you know, when you see when you see a rider like that not, you know, going as well as he should be going. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating. You you want to see a fair fight with everyone on the top yeah. top of the game. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward. Like I said, looking forward to the whole championship. Looking forward to seeing how Sexy adapts. Yeah, He's never been on the Ducati yeah. and back to BSB as well. Haslam, you know, it'll be uh, yeah, it'll be mega. I'd say yeah, I'd say Haslam's gonna go straight to the front. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Super Sport. Kennedy's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, I'd like back on an R six. You know, I'd like Piri to win. Right, well, he's a local lad, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Apple Yard bike. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I mm. think he can. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, Chris, Chris's normal favourite question here: your outside bet for which one? Super, oh. super bike. Uh, Who's going to be the shocker? Well, I need to say someone who's not obvious, and they are. Yeah, yeah, go for someone. Um, Bridewell. That's what you. That's the time well. you yeah. actually went like out. <laughs> yeah, you, I'd say you got your two Yamahas, your, your two PBM Ducatis. Yeah. And you've got Haslam, and I think guaranteed they'll be at the front. Yes. Yeah. Then, depending on the round, you've got twenty other riders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like you say, remember Bridewell at that Alton Park meeting. And yeah, yeah, it was unreal. That, yeah. It was just like yeah, where, he was where taking the... like seconds a lap out of everyone. He, yeah, he just from lap one he gapped and you think where the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> that was like the perf if you had to say one performance of yeah. one race all season. I can't believe what I was watching. Yeah, that, I'll be honest. It made him look slow. I was like, what? What is going on? Yeah, because from like just like he just like hang on, what? What? <laughs> like from <laughs> second to tenth was all like swished yeah, together, yeah, and then yeah. he just left. It was like the rest were even on superbikes, but he did it from 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 getting off the line till the last lap. And it was just every lap, just like, what, what, what's got into him? It was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I'll tell you what, like, do, do you think Hickman's stoppable on the TT? Because um, Michael's going back on that Ducati. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, let's go through, like, fa favourites yeah, okay. for favorites for the big bike race yeah. and then 600s and super light. Um, you've got to say Hickman's the favourite. Yeah, just like it's, it's, it's almost like it's to, almost like a water off a duck's back, isn't it? Almost. Yeah, now it will be interesting to see Michael on the. It will be. The yeah, I'm really well, looking forward to it. That thing will be fast. There. It will be fast. Um, <laughs> We're speaking to the perfect person about that. Yeah, it will be we? fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just, I literally on Thursday uh, just gone. They they came down with the the, the Ducati and we spent like ten hours on the dyno. Jesus. So um, like I say, going to put in the work in for getting Josh back to the front and stuff like that, they're definitely doing it. Yeah. Uh, and then also that, you know, it's not just, sorry, it's not just for for, for Josh, but for, for all the riders and getting an understanding of that bike and how to get the best out of it. However, TT is a totally different, totally different place to anywhere. Uh, and you'll only find out at the TT. Yeah. There won't be any indication. The Northwest won't give you an indication. Um, I think it'll do well at the Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because like we, we talk about a fair bit. It's like Sealy. Like you, you say it all the time. Well, not all the time, but every time it's brought up, you, you rightly said the smallest rider on the fastest bike, and that didn't seem to work. But if anyone's going to grab it by the horns and go for it, it yeah. is Dunlop, isn't it? People yeah. looking forward. To be honest, if it, the sport kind of needs big changes, so yes. that's yes. talking points going yeah. into it. If yeah. everyone was lined up on exactly the same bike, same teams yeah. and stuff, it's big, it starts to get a bit predictable. Yeah. So like things like that move is like perfect because yeah. like I'm really yeah really looking forward to see how it goes. Like. You know, on paper, right, it's massive power. We know that. But massive power, say, electronically, you need to control that. Massive power doesn't necessarily make a, 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 a fast motorbike, um, as daft as that sounds. But what the Ducati's got going for it, crank rotates uh, in a different direction to a conventional bike. So oh, it's right. going forward. So that naturally, the inertia naturally wants to keep your front wheel on the ground. It's got right. massive wings on it. Another should benefit. keep the front wheel on the ground. So, you know, you're fighting that front wheel at the TT. Yeah. If there's a little bit of advantage to be had by keeping that down, there that's you go. Hard. That's, you know, that's time in the bag. There you are. Yeah. Did not know about that Ducati. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That is really clever, yeah, that's, that, Mike. Uh, Super Sport. Uh, well, the TT. Yeah. yeah. Michael. Right. Uh, what's Michael on? Yeah. Super Sport. Well, he's not, not announced anything. So. Has he not? But you think Michael, fair enough. Yeah, R6. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 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 Super Twin uh, J- Jamie Coward Do you think? Yep. I also think the Kazaki will yeah, I do a lot of work with, uh, with with that team With Kev and Simon Bleasdale And the amount of effort they put in I mean Simon does your twin and You know the, the ma- It's his life T- twins is what just about, his life. What about this pattern? You know, it's always, what about Pete Hickman with this? No, I one? think Mike, look, well, yeah, that's not going to be allowed in, right? It, it doesn't fit to within any, it doesn't fit to any regs. That so but it's already had a race, it raced last time we were there, too. Yeah, was was with three yeah, bikes. We've r- raced on the imp- impression that it was going to be put into production and it never has been. So, right? I, I mean, I don't know if the, I don't know if anything's been announced, but I would be shocked. Shocked if they like that in, right? I, yeah, I don't, wait. No, I I agree. It, it's, it, it, yeah, it's daft, isn't it? It's just like, <laughs> you know, essentially, that but that bike's no different to if you just knock some up in your shed. Well, yeah, like and, a up with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. well, what's that? What's it based on? You know, like where's the ruling? Yeah, where's, where's the, the where's the rulings? Right, okay. Are you are you cheating? Are you not? Well, I don't know. Where's your homologation drawings? Where's the, you know? <laughs> th- th- there's nothing for it. Yeah. So, um. Well, I, you know, I just I hope they've not put a lot of money and effort into making that bike so they can race it and then they're not allowed that. Yeah, you know, that'd be a shame. But, yeah, it would be. Um, I, I can't see it. I can't see it. What about them dreaded patterns then? Uh, yeah, Mike... I, listen, I think Michael will be hard to beat on the pattern. Yes. Um, Jamie's hungry for it though, isn't he? But Jamie just gets better and better. Yeah. And you know, I know that bike inside out, and what go you know what's gone into that and. It's good. To be fair, and he was very, very close to winning it last just time. The last so TT was like close. a couple of tens. He was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very close to winning it last time. And I think he'll be even better. He's looking leader. He's looking yeah, faster. Yeah. He's out in Spain. He's doing this. He's doing that. And yeah. he's, he's hungry for it. And, yeah. Um, oh. I mean, also, probably my outsider as well will be Lee on the Aprilia. Mm. When you look at someone and you think, you should be good on it. He is good on them, him. isn't he? Yeah. He's just he just he's just such a strong super sport ride, and that's where yeah. he, he enjoys it, isn't he? So he, that's where he focuses on. But like yeah. you say, if he put a bit, yeah, if he put if, 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 focus you know, on if that, it more, if that if that Aprilia handles so much better than anything else, yeah, it might not necessarily need the power that say the Kawasaki and the Patton have got. Um, so yeah, it could be interesting. It's exciting. I think the twin rate. The twi- see, that's the thing. Everyone just says because it's a lower capacity class. It really does. It, some of the best races we've ever seen in road racing have been on a super twin. The closest finishes and everything yeah, like yeah, that. And yeah. it's just like, but no, I t- like Jamie's a good friend of mine, and I'm obviously in the same race. And obviously, I want to win it, but I'd like to see Jamie win it. Yeah, it would be, it yeah, would be great. I would. Yeah, and like I say, they, they, they've put so much effort into getting that bike where it is. Yeah, it you know, and they come close. So mm. you you want someone to. Take that next yeah. step, don't you? Um, well, we'll have a few Patreon questions, but just uh, one from me. Have you ever had a bike uh, plop itself on the dining Yeah. <laughs> after, <laughs> after a race? Because um, surely that's really I awkward. I have, yeah, actually, yeah. Like... Um, I have. I In BSB, they run a Saturday 
uh, what, uh, sprint race, I think, for yeah. the uh, Super Sport. Mm. And it was the year that Luke Stapleford won the championship on the Triumph. Yeah. And, I mean, that 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 was good. Like, very good uh, power, that bike, you know. It, but it was on the limit. And they were going through, like, engines every weekend. And he just won the race at Brands Hatch. <laughs> but it... <laughs> Just literally, I'd only just started going on the on the dyno and it dropped a valve. And you're in that truck and you've got the door shut and you're on your own and you're like, how's this going to go down? So you open the door and you're like, well, and you're like, oh, has it let go? Uh, I don't know if it's mechanic or it might have been his dad or whoever. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I was only at eight thousand RPM and bloody, bloody, bloody. Like, no, no, no. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. That's what a relief. And, you know wh why? Well, if it's gonna blow up on the dyno, it's gonna blow up on track. If I hadn't have run that, that valve would have gone in morning warm up, and then there'd have been a panic on, a like panic that. on to get ready for the, you know, to get ready for the for the race the same day. What had actually happened was I'd just given them the opportunity to change your engine overnight. Yeah. So they were happy <laughs> as it goes, yeah. yeah. If, but I'd say that's the only one, I think. And if Joe Public came in and did that, it would be bull. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if, oh. if, yeah, if, if an engine's going to go on a dyno, it's going to go on track. So yeah, of course it is. Where, where would you sooner it happen? Yeah. Have you, like, you know when a new bike's being released, have you ever been gutted by one? You thought it was going to be so much more... Uh, then it actually delivered. You think this is going to be a, like what you said, a game changer. Yeah. And you actually been like, that's shite. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I can't, I can't really think of any. I don't, yeah, I don't tend to get too excited about <laughs> wow, this new model. Because like, it's just like, right. It's your you day don't job, get, isn't yeah, it? Don't get, don't get too excited. Let's just actually get excited after we've yeah. seen what it's like. Yeah. 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 I've, uh, I've actually nicked that question from one of our patrons, Ty, because no, about. A bike shipping itself on the dyno. That was yeah. He also said, "What's the hardest bike to map?" Ooh, ooh. Um, don't know. <laughs> uh, What's the most difficult bike you've worked on? That is just a chew to get engines at. What, like you see a bike roll in, go off there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, probably the last one. I fit a power commander on a. Um, it's the scooter, uh, the Yamaha scooter five twenty thing, T Max. Right. Oh, I actually did one for Shaky as well. Yeah, he's got a T Max, and uh, I fit a power commander for it. And <laughs> I, you're like, right, okay, it's, it's a scooter. Like, well, you know, this will be easy. And then like, you look at the fitting instructions for a power commander, and you're like, oh, okay, right, I've got to take all that, that them panels off, and you've got to take the foot boards off, and bloody bloody blah, 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 blah. And I, yeah, that's. That's that's when you just take a lot of pictures when you're doing it. So. <laughs> you just got to notice on the front, no T Maxes ever yeah. that like come to this yeah. shop whatsoever. Um, but I don't know, really. Like, certain bikes have the quirks and stuff, and you get just experience. Yeah, you, you you get to know it. The difficult ones are when there's actually something wrong with the bike. Yeah. Okay, we, we get going. You know, every mapping job really, because we know what we're doing, should be straightforward, and you know we're able to do it. Uh, However, like when you get going and oh right, we've got a misfire or oh this is wrong or that's not making sense, bloody bloody, that's when it breaks into a big job. They're they're the difficult ones, um, and hopefully you know we try and avoid them. But uh, no, so certain bikes like I mean, you rode the ZX10 uh, for uh, Dave's yes, sport, yeah, yeah, and. I ended up mapping that for you, the, the, I don't know if you know, but the TT, because the throttle on that was absolutely awful. It was horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> it was bloody horrendous. And you know, that, that's how the bike came as standard. And it was yeah, difficult, just, to, it was kind, of, diffi it was kind just... of difficult to sort that. And I'll not explain why, because it's like boring and geeky, but yeah. I had, well, I had the same bike the year before and I had exactly this, or it might have been that year, we had exactly the same chew on. We wasted like so many tests pre-season, but for, for people that like either ride or, we'll just explain the problem from yeah. when I first got on that bike, there's like nothing, nothing, nothing. And then basically the, the throttle would come in like a switch. Mm -hmm. So like for people that ride, when you get into the corner and you just want to just touch like, to take the tension out the chain and like just kiss the throttle and then you get your neutral throttle and then soon as you're ready you can then pick the bike up there's like nothing 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 and then soon as the new what you want is neutral throttle it would then accelerate forward and uh we messed around for ages kind of like take yeah it was um but did you did you get there in the end yeah yeah because yeah, you got my map 
A long, it actually a was. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long time of, of messing yeah. around. Yeah. And, um, so I know pe- some people were doing it by going sort of positive ATV values yeah. at low percentages, and some were taken out. And the year after, I actually backed to back both, yeah. and they were like exactly the same. That was with MSS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 There was like so doing it completely different yeah. ways felt the same. But yeah, yeah it was. How is that possible for like a manufacturer? Um, you tell me. I don't know. You think like something coming from a manufacturer you shouldn't need to touch basic yeah, well, no we're not it's complicated but basic you know what i mean the issue with the bike was the the was the etv so the relationship between your, your grip angle which is mm. your wrist what what you twist and how much the actual throttle blade was opening and it again a bit of a funny story um i kind of I, i'd done a couple of bikes that i'd mapped and not addressed the issue so they just come for fueling, fuel and ignition maps. Okay, right, get them fueling right. There you go. On the phone, bike's unridable. Mm. Um, and I'd say it, it was probably, Gary Johnson was probably one of the first people to get it and sort of, he's quite a technical guy and wants to bore you about the, the issues <laughs> with the bikes and stuff. But just off his feedback, it was like, well, right, okay, this bike's got a major issue. We had Bournemouth Kawasaki based here at the time, mm. and they were going to the northwest with Glenn and James. Aye. And James, uh, so we had two stockers here. So I was desperate to see if I could make the bike nicer to ride, any better, get it on the dyno. Uh, and it was literally the day that they were getting the boat to go over to Ireland. It was like, right, we're finished because James's bike got prepared by Factory Phil down at uh, in Bournemouth and uh yeah uh, downshift Dave was doing the uh <laughs> I think everyone's got a code name with yeah. his you know, downshift yeah, yeah. Dave. So downshift Dave was doing uh, Glenn's bike <laughs> and sweating to hear what our names are <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I literally had two hours to figure it out and baby you could you could ride it on the dyno and literally you twist the throttle like you say nothing 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 bang suddenly a load of a load of torque essentially so measuring that it become apparent that, that and when and when you say going positive on the on the etv um it's not at, not actually going positive as in we're delivering more throttle than the rider so we're not going more on the throttle than the grip but in that software and this is a difficult one to, you know this was a difficult one to map because it's a kit ecu from the manufacturer that you're changing uh what are, are essentially trim tables. So you've got a a, ma- a a throttle map, but we can't see that. Mm. So we don't know what it is. That's hidden. It's not it's not viewable in the software. What is viewable in the software is a table with grip angle and RPM with just a hundred in it. So when you look at it, you're like right, okay, I've got to work out what's going on here. Yeah. So that hundred means a hundred percent of the base table. You can't see the base table. So, you're literally shooting in the dark at this point. You're shooting in the dark at this point. So this is where your, your dyno comes in and the knowledge of how to use the dyno's capabilities to measure it. So what we do, we tap into grip position, put that into the dyno. So on the dyno, we can see where the throttle grip is. We tap into the actual throttle position, so then we can see where the actual throttle is. Jeez. So we're reverse engineering what's going on. In the ECU, so suddenly we can see, ah, right, what is actually going on is when you're asking for five percent, it's giving you about two. When you're asking for ten, it's giving you about five. The engine, when you're coming out of a corner at six, seven, eight grand, isn't working at ten percent throttle. Mm. So you move your wrist to ten percent, okay, engine's not working. Move your wrist to fifteen percent. Unfortunately, the ECU at fifteen percent is delivered like nearly 15%. So incoming, nothing, 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 bang, too much. So going positive in those figures, that 100, I think like, you know, if you go if you go to 150, it means 50% more of the base table. So if it's not giving you enough, you're just, uh, that 150 is asking for for 50 more. So the, it, the map that I ended up doing, I'd 
stupid numbers all over it. It looked you, like that, it looked daft. Wrong, but it yeah. looks wrong. Well, I was yeah. like, like trying to simulate what you're like on a bike, isn't it? It's all about that feel, isn't it? And you're you're yeah, trying yeah. to simulate that on a bike that's ratchet strapped to a yeah, table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the whole? Yeah. Uh, but the, it works. Do you know the whole base table thing? Is yeah. that common? Is it common not to be able to see that? Uh, on on a say a manufacturer's kit, you see that they make adjustable by the end user. Yes. Right. Yeah. So even your fuel tables and all that, it's just when they come, it, they're all zero. So it's just an adjustment over the manufacturer's their table, their right. base. Yeah, so I got this like map kind of roughly done and put it in and literally feels like a normal bike again. Yeah. So I kind of I wrote a long email to the electronics guy, uh, Andrea, and said, right, look, bear with me on this because it just looks like a kid's done this map. And it's a bit unknown, and you don't really want to be messing with your throttle stuff and then go into somewhere like the Northwest. Yeah. But I was c fairly confident. So <laughs> he said, right, we'll, we'll, we'll try it in testing. And for some, because they went to Bishop Cork, down somewhere, to, just for a bit of a shakedown. For whatever reason, Glenn crashed on his outlap, so on his stocker, and then just rode the superbike. So they never had a chance to, to, to test it. Uh, so both James and Glenn rode the bikes. Mm with this horrible throttle and finished first and second, I think. And he was like, Dodge, yeah, definitely well, James won. In the in the rain, he just, he, rain. he just cleared off. However, at the Northwest, you quite quickly threw that, you, you know what I mean? A slow corner, stand it up, come out, whack the throttle open. You're not on rolling on and off on the edge of the tire. Um, so going back to fa factory Phil, who looks after James, um, I said to Phil, I said, look, I know you've not tested it yet, but I've still got this map if you want to, you know, if you want to use it. So let's have a look. So we had a look at it. He's like, well, he's what, like, have, you what have you done here? I'm not putting that in my bike. I said, right, okay, no worries. He said, anyway, he said, look, we just won the Northwest. What's, you know, doesn't, why, why, why change anything? Anyway, James went out the first night of practice. Went no. Cut, come in through the bike at him, said, that's unrideable. So then we put it in James's bike and then I think you know, I ended up putting it in your bike as well. Mm. And then obviously ended up in your bike for... For that year, so it was just you know, a, just not doing anything special or or anything, just making the bike feel normal. Yeah. Um. So, you know, it's it's not just about getting maximum power and p performance out out of the bike when a bike's got a fundamental problem. Like yeah. That. Here's here's a really um sort of it, it must be a bit of an awkward one for you, but for example, you say let's just say like a new BMW comes out and everyone's having like the same issue with it and someone comes comes to here and like let's say that they've came up with a, sol a solution for it it's really awkward because you're then in a position where you know the fix but like, they've got that advantage they obviously don't want you to share that but yeah. but it's kind of your job to, as a business to help uh, yeah is it is it a bit of a because obviously you don't like sign a disclosure saying like you're not going to share it. Yeah, it's, it must be a little bit of an awk but awkward, awkward one. Just try and you know operate with common sense. Yeah, and, and professionalism. professionalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know whatever. I'd never kind of just transfer someone else's map to someone else. It's no, not, it's no. not the done thing. Um, and if someone puts a lot of effort into working, you know, we work closely with teams, and you know there has to be that level of trust. And if you break that trust, you are sunk. So yeah, we'll just, just keep yeah. I you know right okay yeah. I, I'm here to help you, but look, we've got to do this together. It's not just here you go. This is someone there's else's. A there's, there's, a, there's, there's a fix. There's a fix. It's someone else's hard work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> difficult on that. No, no. But you're right though, isn't it? Yeah. It's very, very. Yeah. Very I mean, if through. you know, you if you only need to do that once, and then yes, like you've upset people people yeah. and it's the thing about what we're in it's such a small industry yeah that you can't get away with stuff yeah mm. no but the, 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 the world's small the paddock's even smaller isn't it, is, it? That, that's yeah. that's the thing isn't yeah. it? Do, you know, do you know if you weren't doing your job yeah okay but you wanted to be in the paddock like in a ra race team yeah. uh, what sort of role would you like to work in a race team not the electronics yeah. man <laughs> no i'd say yeah probably on the on the electronics because it's yeah. what i know most about listen yes. you've got a do what you know. Stick to what you know. That's the the way to be successful. Um, do you see yourself doing that? No, not point? really. Just happy to be doing what you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one come asking. Yeah. No one come asking. Yeah. Uh, 
that you know I, I had yeah help people out doing doing that sort of stuff but um i like being in a position where you you you, you know you, you're part of sorting the bike out but you're not changing a rear wheel in a pit stop at the tt you know what i mean no pressure mm-hmm. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> Do you know, in terms of all the events, and I think I know the answer before I ask this, uh, out of all of the events that you do, what's your favourite one? TT. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, Steve, I mean, it, you know, if you've never been to the TT, stick it on your bucket list. It, like, there's no, there's nowhere like it. There's nowhere like it. And there's no, there's no event that you can get that experience. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. And, you know, it, Listen, it's hard work for me when I'm there. I was about to say, it's the only place in the world that, like, one in the morning, all he hears, right outside of a police station. Like, yeah, Douglas yeah, headquarters I've, is right there, and he's on the dyno. It's I, class. I've been there, you know, well past midnight, still oh. still running bikes. Um, you know, there's sort of two, two occasions, especially. Oh, I can't think of the year. Um, the, the first one will be... Uh, so the first, the Superbike race is on the Saturday. So your last night at practice is Friday night, and something went when uh, Hickman was riding for JG Speedfit Kawasaki, the Kawasaki AI. and they had an issue, uh, and they basically had to take all the the electronics, loom everything off their super stock bike, and put it on the super bike that night, and then run it and map it. Jesus. So the team manager came over and said, "Look, here's the scenario. Can you hang round and?" You know, do this for us later, later on. Uh, Twenty to twelve, they came to the dino. Jesus. But because I started working there, uh, sorry, because I ca- carried on working because I knew it was going to be a late night. Other, other teams could hear that the dino was running. Before. So do, you know get, uh, do you know what? I'll get in on that. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I did a few, a few people uh, some favors. Um, you know, sort Class. of go, going above and beyond. And the next minute, a Norton rocks up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, we heard you're still running. Can you give this a run? I'm like, you know. <laughs> I've got to be bed at <laughs> yeah, some point. Yeah, so that was a late one. And then we had a, it must have been at the last TT. So we I'd, um, we do a, like a lot of work with uh, Padgett's. Yes. Uh, and got a lot of uh, time for Clive. And, you know, we, we, we talk quite a lot. And uh, it, it's... Uh, it had an engine. Uh, Connor had, uh, had had an engine problem again. Friday night practice, so they came straight in, put it on the dyno, and it was like, yeah, okay, we're down on power. What's going on? So we literally changed every component on the bike, and that was about one o'clock. We finished, and at one o'clock, Clive just said, "We're gonna have to change engines." So he, I says, right. Uh, I said, right. Here's what's gonna happen then. I, I said. You and Dave are gonna uh, change engines, so I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> I said, but as soon as that engine's done and the bike's back together, I said, come back to to the dyno truck. So I, half the dyno truck's living, so yeah. I was sleeping there. I said, knock on the door, and if I don't answer, just keep on knocking till I till Still I do. Like I said, up. I don't care what time it is, uh, and that we'll get it running and mapped because you, you whatever you need, you need to be ready by ten for the race. Yeah. So yeah, Clive worked through the night with Dave. <laughs> knocked on the door uh half five six maybe six i think six in the morning yeah uh i'm like right yeah no worries so sleep in my eyes gets it onto the dyno Cl- clive's like this. i said right clive you go and have a rest just leave this to me so i ran it in mapped it um and kind of went out and finished second I bet you were like you better finish yeah, this race yeah. soon after all that. And then it's, that, not, it's not your normal nine to five job no this it's not. <laughs> no and then uh so that night, uh, this woman comes up to the dyno truck. She's like, can I have a word? I was like, so yeah, what's going on? She said, oh, I just live there. I thought, oh, shit, go. I know what's going on. She went, um, listen, you know, we're, we're all for the TT. We're fans of the TT, but we've got people come over that are stopping with us. And, you know, there's a limit. And you were on the dyno till one o'clock last night. Oh, sorry, you were making noise. She didn't know what a dino was or whatever. You, you, you were making a lot of noise till one o'clock last night and, and it's not on. I said, look, I said, I'm really, really sorry. I said, but, I said, it's it's not my choice. I, I don't want to be working that late at night, trust me. And then I just thought, oh, can I can get out of this. I said, 
it was for Connor coming, so you, 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 it was for one of your own. So she was like, oh, if it was Connor's bike, that's all right. Then. <laughs> 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 totally. So nice. yeah, she, she went off happy. I was like, look, it'll not happen again. Oh, so Hopefully it won't. <laughs> I was about to say, you're going to have to change your digs for this year coming, because when this podcast comes out, every person in that paddock is going to just go knock on the window till he wakes up and see yeah. what happens. That's yeah. it. Some big changes ahead of the TT, isn't there? I know, you were just mentioning before we started yeah. a few different things in the paddock and like, uh, yeah, uh, you're looking forward to all the, the sort of new changes yeah um I, I look forward to the tt regardless uh just saying they seem to yeah they seem to be on the ball this year and really you know changing the event for the better uh one of the points that uh i did say before was <laughs> i looked at the paddock plan and they've moved all the the, the, the riders motorhomes to near the dino truck so, so that'll teach him. You'll be up so, at two in the morning like that. Yeah. There you go, lads. That's for you. So I don't know how that's quite going to pan out. But. It'll be grand. It'll be grand. I grew up sleeping next to that noise. It was outside. One of my favourite memories is um, my dad's G50 single cylinder. I was strobing that. And basically, you could hold now with a light, just getting the timing done on the engine. My dad woke us up and went, Hold that, and hold the trigger when I tell you to. And I'm like, Three in the morning, and you've got a <laughs> single cylinder British engine going, Bob, 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 and no one bats an eye. That is the best thing about the paddock. Yeah, there yeah. is no snowflakes in the paddock of the TT. Yeah, Everyone it. is running. It's rewelling. an engine. And also, like, you know, people hear an engine running at that time, they know someone's got an issue. Of course, it is. And it could be them. You know what I mean? Exactly. Every, you know, people have like, empathy for other people because the job's hard enough as it is exactly like right now do you not do you never get uh, any sort of urges or things to have a go yourself and like with the whole do you never like because obviously you're so involved uh, and get the power and stuff do you you never fancy a bash yourself no so I I had my own racing career so I started racing go-karts when I was 10 Uh, then moved into car racing uh, and then eventually r- r- raced in uh, British touring car. It was relatively successful. Um, I've never felt the need to go and ride a bike on a track because I was pretty good at racing cars, and I'd want to be as good as that as I was on a. Yes. I, I, I'm on a bike. You want yeah. to transfer that success, and I know I won't be able to. <laughs> Because I'm, so I'm not good enough. Yeah. yeah. So you'd be yeah, bitching I, I, at boats I, now with that pond. Yeah. On. <laughs> yeah. So I'd, I'd just, I'd frustrate myself. Yeah. Yeah. Aye. So I, you know, I, I wouldn't enjoy it because, because of the frustration. What about no, like say on a. I know they don't do Mad Sunday anymore, but like a blast around <laughs> the island, you never go. Scares me. A, a parade. You wouldn't even fancy. It. Scares just... me, honestly. If, when I go to the TT and you're there and you know you, you you're yeah. living it, aren't you? Yeah. You're like so wrapped up in it, and it's like two weeks. I'd say for the next three months, uh, I have dreams where I'm on the start line <laughs> on a bike that I don't want to be on, <laughs> and I set off and I don't know my way. Where, <laughs> I don't know my way around. You're literally yeah, living I a have, nightmare. I, 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 yeah, I have recurring dreams where like I'm racing at the, at the TT. Yeah. Oh. So it's like combining like because obviously because I used to race myself and then like and then I'm, I'm with it and I'm like that's the last thing I want to do and then like for some reason in my subconscious I'm like at start line like ah, the blue's tapping you go yeah, I'm yeah, like, go I don't want like, to mate yeah, like, which way do I go stand <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what we actually forgot to do this on the bird do you want, do you want uh, did, have you got a problem with your hand or something yeah. did you say? so I, we'll leave the uh, grip strength game. Um, do you fancy a bash anyway? Your mate, well, your mate was pretty impressive. Like the What's gas, it? the gas man. Yeah, yeah, the gas man. Andy, the gas man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everyone has a cool name in this bit. This is me. Nah, yeah. You broke your skateboard or something just, like that. Yeah, I broke my skateboard. Yeah. Oh, there Recent we go. Carting, so watch this. He's gonna bang out. How do you mean when you were like, a kid? You broke it. Uh, no, I was be about seventeen, eighteen, or something like that. Right, I. It, it was my own fault as well. I didn't put my front wheel on properly, so <laughs> ended up going. Well, that'll teach yeah, you. Yeah, it did. Yeah, ended up going into a banking, knocked myself out, uh, found my way back to Park Fermi, talking gibberish, and then was like, "Oh, wrist is hurting." And then, yeah, sure enough, yeah, I broke my wrist. Yeah. Lovely. Were you, were you yeah. British champion in the go kart? No. Yes. Yeah. How yeah. many times? Uh, twice. I think. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Some achievement there. That is yeah. a hell of an achievement. Yeah. He had a Again, go at you now. And he's he's you know when you go when you go out with all our mates he's rapid. I mean yeah. he did this BSB. I didn't even do it. It wasn't even British. It was just a, like, a club race. I got absolutely annihilated. Well, where did you go? 
Uh, what your say? Where did you go? Teesside. Teesside. Teesside yeah, yeah, it was on the. Is it Supercart or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. No, but he turned up right, and he was like, <laughs> but like I say, when he comes out of all of us, it's like Chris is fast and that. Chris, like I can imagine him just pulling up there, going, yeah, mid pack. That'd be nice. <laughs> and then Mark <laughs> gives us a. Do you know what? It's one. Of, it's one of those sports where the first when you start, you, you're absolutely crap. <laughs> There's no shortcut. No. No one goes in and like, he's like straight to the front. You've got. It's like got to learn so much so you know Lewis Hamilton didn't rock up and win his first race he was at the back and like did you used to race against Lewis no he's just a little bit older different era uh only, only just only just would you, would you have been at the same meetings no I don't right. think I ever was no be at the same meetings as uh I'm trying to think um although they they would like be in the, the junior category to what I was in but yeah. uh for a couple of years like Alex Albon Lando Norris those sort of people uh, right. Uh, they used to race with George Russell's older brother, Benji Russell. Mm. You know, if someone gave you a chance to do the rally lap around the TT, would you have a tickle at it then? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a good I, I don't I've do never that even anymore. driven around the, the, the TT you're, course. You're literally in that, you're in that dino truck. <laughs> God love yeah. you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, if you managed to get around for a lap, I'm like, are you, are you having a laugh? <laughs> You know, if I'm, not, slept for three weeks, yeah, if I'm uh, not in the dino truck, I'm straight to beer tent. <laughs> there you are, that's where everyone's going to find you. Yeah. If I'm there to there, good lad, good yeah. lad. Definitely get you a few beers. But anyway, yeah, have a quick crack. We're right, not going to go record on. this yeah, one. Record I want to see one. what the crack is here. Go on, son. That's was, upsetting. What was that? Be- <laughs> what was that? That? that was a 11 and a half. 11 and a half. Oh, I decent. That's yeah, a good. shot, man. There that's all right. Are. Imagine what I'd be like, fully fit. That, that, yeah. That's trying to prise people wallets off them when they've got to pay for them like that. Yeah. I'm stronger than you, son. <laughs> <laughs> Straight off the bat. Cool. But uh, no, hey, thank you very much. And I think we've got some really exciting stuff coming up at the TT. And yeah, now, now that, yeah. that, like, uh, I've got to pull my finger out and organise some bikes. So, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just before we wrap things up, I, obviously, I was speaking to you, if, uh, it was a few months ago now. Yeah. And uh, it was it's funny the way it worked out because you were just telling us, like, so many things that were going to, like, uh, that were in the pipeline. And literally everything you were telling us is just been coming out, and like uh, rides keep getting in, getting announced. And I was thinking, like, oh, I heard about that months ago off you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is yeah. that have you got any other? Yeah, rumors? but I'd have, I'd, it's probably okay, it's really. probably good that we didn't do Sworn it in a way because yeah, I mean, because, <laughs> because that's it. No one would tell me anything ever again. Um, I don't know what do you want to know. Everything. What's left? There's know, nothing left really, is there? Uh, really. You know, superbike grid set. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah, I think everything's pretty much everything. Do you want to start a rumor? Do you want to start one? Um, Ulster's coming back all of a sudden again. <laughs> Dino Jetta funding it. Oh, you know anything about uh, like that? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I do. Yeah, sometimes I think oh, like, I've got to watch what I say. Like I know too much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. But well, anyway, next time we're chasing race, and we're going to reveal all those secrets. Like, it goes simple as that. But no, honestly, yeah. Thank, thank you so much for your time, Thanks and um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to waking you up at two in the morning and <laughs> doing my bike at the TT. It's going to be good crack, man. It's going to be good crack. Class, and uh, yeah, huge thanks to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, and obviously all of our patrons. And thank you very much for your time, and yeah. look, look forward to catching up with you sometime yeah. soon. Cheers. Definitely. Cheers, Cheers thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Chasing the racing, powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield. Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.